What's up, people? I am back for another video. We're continuing on with the Tarantino films. This week, we are doing Death Proof, which, like I mentioned, I got confused for Planet Terror, which was actually a... It was a double feature that came back, came out, and I think Tarantino did help with Planet Terror, because uh, um, Rose McGowan's in both. So, this is a movie I'll admit I only watched once. It was a couple years that I didn't really even know it was a Tarantino film. I just, oh, it was Kurt Russell and some hot chicks, so. But it's a very nice homage to, like, 70s films where just, it wasn't a name brand movie. It was just, oh, you have an idea for a movie. You know, even in, like, like that, that first chunk, which I'll agree is, like, the best part of the movie, you know, it was shot like a 70s movie. You even had, like, some of the the editing and little filters that would filter through like it's being shot on film like it, they do a really good job um and basically the plot is kurt russell plays a character named stuntman mike who's actually basically he's basically a serial killer who um kills um a group of four girls gets away he basically gets away with it and then stalks another group of girls you have a the cast is pretty good. I mean, you have Rose McGowan for a bit. You have um, Ro Rosario Dawson. You have um, what's the other girl? She, um, Zoe Bell, who plays herself. She's a stunt woman who she actually does a lot of Tarantino films. She's most famous for being the um, the bride, st um, the stunt woman for um, for uh, Uma Thurman. So for the Kill Bill movies. So. You have her. The cast is pretty decent. It's like, if anything, Kurt Russell is probably the biggest name. And then maybe Rosario after. But, um, this was an interesting movie. It's not, like, I, if, like I'm definitely gonna pro probably will rank Tarantino movies at some point. Like, probably when I'm done. Definitely will rank them. This one would probably go lower. It's not a bad movie, but it's not Tarantino's best, especially compared to his heavy hitters. But this movie's solid. If you want to kill, like, an hour and 50 some minutes you have some solid kills some decent dialogue hot chicks to look at you know so the soundtrack's pretty fun you like 70s cars it it's a good film in that sense it's nowhere near like any one of his like best films compared to like um you know his other movies so but it's a solid one you know kurt russell does a good job I do wish one thing, my only, I guess my criticism, we don't get a lot of info about Kurt Russell besides little stuff. I would have liked to, maybe not fully, but like, go into why does he like to kill, like, I don't know, they just, I feel like they could have done more, because really, this film is a chase, but if you can get over that, this is a solid film. It's not, like, it's not boring, it doesn't drag, it gets going pretty quick, so, and even, I love the opening. That opening where it just transitions to like a, it almost looks like a 70s film. And that's because Tarantino loves that like 70s aesthetic to his films. So, but definitely, real, um, I would probably give this one um, like a 7 out of 10. It's definitely, compared to his other movies, isn't as good, but it's solid. So, um, let's kick off this review. So the movie opens up. We meet friends Arlene, <coughs> Shauna, and Julia. They're um, they live in Austin, Texas. So the movie starts in Austin. <coughs> you get this nice like '70s style opening, kind of not like like Jackie Brown exactly, but like you know, it does feel like a '70s movie. And I like how it starts off with a mystery. You don't really know. You just see these group of friends. Um, they're celebrating Julia's birthday at a bar. Then, um, um, they offer, she offers a free, because the, the, there, she gets, um, Julia, I think one of the girls offers a one lap dance. Um, then, we see, um, uh, Rose McGowan, who I think she, you know, she looks hot. She doesn't do a lot in this movie, but... 
you mm-hmm. know, this movie, but she does fine, and then we meet aging Stuntman Mike, or Stuntman Mike, and, uh, he wants a lap dance, so we get this, like, the iconic scene from, probably one of the more iconic scenes from this movie is Arlene giving him a black a lap dance, which is a pretty good scene. You get some nice dialogue between Mike and, um, Rose McGowan and the other group of friends. Like, there's a lot of thing going, a lot of things going on. It's not like, the thing is with this movie, it's not a traditional movie. Like, it's not linear, really. Like, I mean, it's kind of linear, but it's not fully. There's no real main character. Um, if anything, they almost make it seem like, um, Kurt Russell is, but he's also the bad guy. <laughs> it's almost like he's both. So, um, gets the lap dance, which I'll admit, really well done scene. Not just because, you know, it was hot, but the music was great. So, then everyone's leaving the bar, and, uh, Mike takes to Rose McGowan. I don't really think I remember her name, that's why. Um, Um, the girls are gonna go to a lake house while Mike seemingly takes Rose McGowan home. Then we get the actual reveal, which I think is done very well, because he mentions that his car is death proof. Because he mentions, because he's a stunt man, you know, he has to make his car. Oh, the girl's name is Pam, so that's uh, Rose McGowan's name. So he asks Pam which way. She say, he says left, left, and basically kills her. This kill scene is fucking brutal. He explains that the reason this car is death proof mainly on his side, and then he slams it, and her face slams on the like on a like on a thing. Oh, he smashes his skull on the dashboard, and it's brutal, man. Like some of the like, even though it's not a lot of them. Some of the violent kills are pretty brutal. And I'm going to get to one of them right now. So after killing Pam, he runs into the women, the other girls, and he ends up high speed running into them. And one of the girls, I think it's Julia, has her legs like hanging out of the window and he rams her. They they sh- like rewind it a couple of times. like they, they give you a nice visual. And oh my God. Julia gets fucked up. Like, she gets split in half. Arlene gets, like, a tire in her face. It's fucking brutal. It's like, wow. <laughs> well done, like, action. And then, doo doo, we, we get a, some. We meet a Ranger McGraw, who. Mc, yeah, Mc, McGraw. Yeah, I got his name right. Um, thinks Mike killed them, but. He's sober, and there's a reason that's why he, there's a scene earlier where he's at a bar and he's not drinking, is that. And the the girls were high and drunk, so they, it's unfortunate, deemed an accident, even though it wasn't. So, we jump 14 months, basically over a year later, and we're in Lebanon, Tennessee. We meet three young women, um, Abbert, Bernathy, I've not seen that name a lot. Abernathy, I think that's how I'll say it, which is Rose McGowan's character, not Rose McGowan, Rosario Dawson's character. Um, we meet um, Abby, uh, we meet stump man, stump woman Kim Mathis and um, Zoe Bell, who plays herself, basically. And I think another girl we meet is... Uh, actress Lee Montgomery who that's um, Elizabeth Winstead who actually Mary Elizabeth Winstead actually does a really good job even though her role in this movie is kind of small like she doesn't really there's a scene scene where she's singing which is really good but that's kind of like all she really does so we see Mike kind of following the women around Mike does kind of disappear from this port like there's a scene where he fucks with uh, I think like um, Rosario's, like, sleeping in her car, and Mike, like, touches her feet and calls her to freak out, and he acts like he's picking something up, and then he drives off, and then that's kind of the last we see of him for a good, almost 30 minutes. I think that's, like, other issue. It's, like, he just kind of disappears for, like, 
And I get it. Maybe he, Tarantino felt like we gotta follow the, these women who are fine. I like the dialogue between the three of them. You know, we get... They bring up Daryl Hannah, so we get some, like, actual, like... Um... And Zoe tells him she's trying to test drive a, a, a 1970 Dodge Challenger. Um, so we get that scene, and then they end up test... The film kind of goes quick after this. So yeah, they test drive the car. Mike, we finally pretty much meet up with him again. Um, he rear-ends them. Um, and manages to... Um, and Mike was like, oh, uh, you know, I was just having some fun. And um, I think Kim shoots him in his arm and then they basically chase him. They pretty much kill him in the end. That's really what happens. They chase him until they finally catch up to him and then they basically beat the shit. I think they beat him to death and then that's the film. It's a solid film. I just think my problem is the last chunk of the movie kind of falls off a bit. Just because, like, that first half was pretty interesting. Maybe we should have got some more with Mike. Because he just kind of disappears for, like, almost, I don't want to say 30 minutes. We don't see him for a good 30 minutes. We follow these, you know, these group of women who are fine. They're not bad actresses. I like Rosario Dawson. I like the dialogue and the banter between the three of them. They actually have some chemistry. Mary Elizabeth Winstead, if I remember, they just leave her back at the place where they where the guy who was selling them the car. So, I think all around it's a fine movie. It's definitely not my go-to Tarantino film. I think I will probably watch it if I'm in the mood. Definitely has some good gore for the little few gore scenes we get. I think Kurt Russell does a pretty good performance. They make him, they make him somewhat likable for a guy who's basically, he's essentially a serial killer. Um, my main issue is just, he just kind of disappears in like the last 30 minutes of the movie. And then he just appears when, oh, we got, now we got to have him attack the girl's car. It's like, I just felt like they could have done more with him. But besides that, it's still a solid flick. You know, it's only hour and 53 minutes. It gets going pretty quick and it's not boring. It's essentially just a chase, the last chunk of the movie. But I had fun with it. I think Tarantino does a good, like the chase scene is actually really fun the music was good it's a nice homage to 70s films so this film um i would give death proof a 7 out of 10 it's definitely the weakest tarantino film i wouldn't call it bad though it's just is probably his weakest one but uh yeah tomorrow i will be reviewing super cop which i cannot wait for because that's a uh, that's one i think i've only seen once but man jackie chan and michelle yo are great i remember i definitely remember the fight scene i don't remember the whole story but i remember the fight scene so definitely cannot wait to do that tomorrow then um yeah that's my plan so far for the week right now but other than that i'm gonna cheers one more time Fuck Warner Brothers. Fuck Disney. <coughs> fuck LeBron. Fuck Kevin Smith. Fuck Seth Rogen. Fuck Joy Reid. <coughs> fuck Joe Biden and his administration. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Peace!